In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we start our session today in episode, and I praise him alone, for he is the only one worthy of worship, and I ask him by his names and attributes that he will bless you and I and the brothers that are with me, and that he will educate us and teach us what's best for us to learn in this life, and will benefit us in the hereafter. May he subhanahu wa ta'ala make the last of our actions the best of our lives of actions mm-hmm. and the best of our days the days that we stand in front of him inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May he make our actions good deeds and may he forgive the bad ones. May he subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this show and allow it to enter into the hearts of those who we have loved and cared for and shared our information with. The eternal message the message that will continue to the end of time. And if you recall in our last episode, brothers and sisters, we have ended our life with death. And we have reached in to our second life in the grave with that first squeeze and that scream that every living being will scream once they enter to where it's heard by all creations except the human beings and the jinn. And today, inshallah, we will continue to see what happens in the grave. But before I get into the topic and talk about it, I would like to introduce my fellow brothers here that are here. And I'd like to start introducing my brother Akmal on my right side from Malaysia. Yeah. And I would like to introduce brother Noor from Indonesia. <coughs> and brother Abdul Fattah from the United States of America and Ibrahim on the far there on my left from Guinea Conakry, and you, wherever you are, whatever part of the world that you're in, you in your room, in your living room, in your office, in your bedroom next to your spouse, or next to your father or mother, or just next to your book that you read at night, the Quran. I welcome you to our show. And hope that our show will entertain you. That Al Huda TV has been able to provide a show that have touched your heart. And I, your host, Abdul Hakim, has been able to deliver the message to you. The life in the grave, brothers and sisters, is true. It is true just like we believe that there was a fetus in a mother's womb and we hurt the beat of the heart of that fetus. And we understood within the months that it was a boy or a girl and if it was alive, healthy or not. The grave also is a living time to where there's room in there that can be as narrow as you can ever imagine or as vast as you can never dream. The life in the grave, my brothers and sisters, is called (coughs) Al-Barzakh. Al-Barzakh. That is the life of the grave. It's called Al Barzakh. Did you understand it, Ibrahim? What is it called? Yes, sir. Al Barzakh. Al Barzakh. The life of the grave is called Al Barzakh. And it's the true life. In the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said about death, that when the angel of death takes the soul out of the body, there will be two angels waiting for it. And they will take it from him in the blink of an eye. And if it was a righteous soul, they will have it wrapped in a white, beautiful cloth from Jannah. And they will rise with it to the heavens. And the gates of heavens will open for it. And it would have a beautiful scent to where all the occupants of the heavens will say, what a beautiful scent this is. 
Who is this beautiful man that has this scent? And they will all pray for this beautiful soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might bless and forgive. But if it's on the other side, unfortunately, the angels will take it quickly from the angel of death. And they will try to elevate it into the heavens. But it will reach the first gate of the heavens, the heavens that is for earth, and it will be denied access. And it will have a bad smell to where the occupants of those heavens will say, what bad smell this is. Who is this evil soul that it belongs to? And they will curse it. And it will be thrown back to its body with such harshness and force. And in the grave, as soon as you are laid down, my brother and sister, and the people walk away, there will be two angels that come to you. They're called Munkar and Nakir. Nakir. Munkar Wanakir. They will come and stand at your head. Stand next to you. And they will ask you three questions. Questions you cannot cheat. Questions you cannot just practice by reading to memorize if you have not lived up to those answers. In the hadith, if it's a Muslim If it's a righteous person, the angels will say, Who who is your Lord? And with confidence and strength and power, and without doubt, you will say, Allah. And the next question will be, Who is this man that was sent to you? And with confidence for the believers, they would say, Muhammad, Rasulullah, alayhi salatu wa salam. And then who, what was the religion that was permitted for you? What was your religion? And he would say, Islam. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not your Lord, and the Prophet is not your messenger that sealed the messengers before, and Islam is not your religion that is the religion of Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Jacob and David, and all the Prophets before, that you ran out of luck. Because this righteous man, after he answers these questions, there's another angel that would come in the shape of a man. Not an angel, actually. I'm sorry. But a man will come in such a beautiful, structured face with beautiful scent, so handsome. And he will sit next to you in your grave to keep you company. And you will say, Who are you? For your face is a face that brings joy. Mm -hmm. And it will answer, I am your good deeds. Mm -hmm. I am your good deeds. Your good deeds will come and give you company. But if you are not a good man, or a good woman, a good person, those two angels, when they ask you, who was your Lord? And who was that man? And what's your religion? The answer will be like this, as the hadith describes the saints of the Rasul ﷺ. When you're asked, what is, who, who is your Lord? You would say, ha, 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 ha. I don't know. I heard people say Allah, so I said so. Not accepted. You can't copycat. Mm-hmm. If Allah was not in your heart in this life, then He's not in your heart in the grave. Even if you have heard it, those hypocrites that we, live, we have to live with, and they live in our societies, those who hide their disbelief in their hearts and show us that they are believers. In the grave, they are exposed. They would say, ha, ha. They're like idiots. Huh? I don't know. I heard people say, so I said. And it's not accepted. And then the next question, who is this man? And if you had not recognized the Rasul ﷺ in this life, the Prophet, peace be upon him, and lived according to the teachings of the Prophet, and loved the Prophet, and had him as your example and respected the Prophet, then you will come during that time in the grave when you need that question, and you would say, Ha ha, I don't know. I don't know. And then when you're asked about your faith, if, you're, if Islam was not your faith, my brothers and sisters, no matter where you're at, 
if you have not surrendered your heart and faith and life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your answer is, again, ha ha, I do not know, I do not know. I heard people say Islam, so I said so. Mm-hmm. It is not enough. And then all of a sudden, a very ugly, scary face comes. A person with scary, scary body and face and grumpy. And he will come next to you and you will say, A'udhu Billah, I seek the refuge of Allah. Who are you with such an ugly, scary face that came and brought bad luck to me? And he would say, I am your bad deeds that you have made. And curse you. And throughout that grave, he's there. The grave all of a sudden will shape into what you have became, good or bad. In the hadith, for the righteous person, the grave will be expanded as far as eyesight will be. And we're right with you, and there will be a window that will be opened to where he gets to see his position in Jannah, his place in Jannah. And he would look at it and wish that the day of judgment comes quickly. And there's vast space that he will be given in heaven. Yes, I mean, in, in, in the grave. What's your question? Yeah. Most of the fools uh, have done good deeds and bad deeds. So will uh, they both uh, come? I mean, the, uh, the good deeds and the bad deeds? We all have mixed our life with good and bad deeds. It is a sign of which have overwhelmed the other. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. So if your good deed overwhelmed your bad deeds, you're already getting that first signal. Only. Yeah. And some have said that in the grave, it will only distinguish between the Muslim and the Kafir. Mm. Not necessarily the Muslim within their levels, but the Kafir and the Muslim. So if you are a Muslim, then your grave, inshallah, will be a blessed grave. In the day of judgment, you will be judged fairly to where you are accountable to the scale. We're coming into a break. I have a question here for Abdul Fattah after the break, as well as a question for Noor after the break, as well as we will talk about the grave of those who disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did not have Muhammad as their messenger and Islam as their religion, how that grave will be and the kind of punishments or rewards that can exist in the grave. Thank you for being with me and I hope that you stay till the next session. Don't go away for we will not. In a few moments, we will return. So stay put. Thank you. Covering the manners in Islam that a Muslim is supposed to have in Islam. There is a strong link between having good manners and piety. And then he said, I guarantee a dwelling in the highest rank of Jannah for the one who perfects his manner. That indeed, truthfulness leads to piety, to righteousness. And righteousness and piety leads to Jannah. Uh, the Prophet used to always uh, maintain family ties. Gentleness in Islam means to treat people with kindness and with tenderness. Welcome you back to the show of Eternal Message. I'm your host, Abdul Hakim Ali, and I welcome the brothers here, Akmal and Noor, Abdul Fattah, Ibrahim. 
We were talking about you and I, the righteous of people, insha'Allah, that our grave will be expanded to as far as eyesight can go. And it will be a garden of heaven. That's what the Rasul described the grave as a garden of heaven for those who are believers. And there will be a window open to where we get to see our place in Jannah. And hopefully it's a beautiful place as it is. But for those who are unfortunate because they lived their life wrongly, recklessly, their grave, my brothers and sisters, will be narrowed to where it's crushing them. And then they will have a window open to their place in hell where they can see where they will be burnt and burnt and burnt for eternity. Where there's no ending to where they will pray and hope and wish that the day of judgment never comes. But it's not going to be prevent it. You can only prevent it now, but later you cannot. And then, there will be punishments in the grave for those who did not pray, for those who did not believe. There will be a huge, huge snake called the Shuga' al-Aqra. And a hammer that will come with it squeezing you and pounding on your head till the day of judgment. Continuous screams and punishment. Don't take a chance. Don't take a chance because you're the one that's going to pay. We had questions before our break, which we have postponed, to hear from our brother Abdul Fattah and brother Noor. Mm. And any other questions that the rest of the brothers might have if they do? Brother Abdul Fattah? Yeah, so what we were saying is that basically after death, you're pretty much going to have a pretty big clue about where you're going. <laughs> so by any chance, can that uh, be changed when it comes actually to standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, that can be changed to better, not worse. Not worse. Only Not better. worse. Okay. But to better. Hmm. Unless, I mean, one is going to hell, then of course it's worse. But I'm saying changing the outcome. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what your question is. Right, right. The change of the outcome. For example, you're in the grave, and basically you're seeing a place in hell. <laughs> yeah. Not a place of heaven. So you tend to see that your destiny is hellfire. But you come in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He scales your actions, he judges you, and he see, you see, as well as he will see before that, that your bad deeds overwhelmed your good deeds. And you might go to hellfire. But at that moment, he forgives you. Uh, That's within him, hmm. his will, if he wishes. Mm -hmm. Or allows the prophet to intercede for you. Hmm. Or allows a martyr among your family to intercede for you. For there are many that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give permission for them to intercede, to give shafa'ah. Yeah. Mm. And that can change the outcome. Okay. From going to hell, to going to heaven. But, if you were in your grave, and you saw your place in heaven, you will not see a change of the outcome, inshallah. I'm that. <laughs> you will go to heaven because yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives, but does not take away your good deeds. Yeah. He might take away some of your bad deeds. And in fact, sometimes... There's a hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will argue on your behalf. Argue on your behalf. If you had done someone wrong, you have to pay back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all the sins that's to him. But the mm. sins of people, oh, you have to be accountable level. for. Oh. But on that day, he will come to that person that you have done wrong, and he will tell him, if I was to give you so-and-so reward, will you forgive him? Hmm. And he will negotiate until the person is pleased and say, yes, I forgive him. Then he will say, take your brother with you to Jannah. Mm -hmm. I hope we don't get to that level where we do not need anyone to argue on behalf of us and that our deeds themselves will be sufficient 
for us to earn His mercy. We know that if you have memorized the Quran, the Quran will refuse to leave you alone until it takes you to Jannah. We know that if you had parents, they can be the ones to take you to Jannah. So the outcome might change, but to the better. For the better, yeah. Okay. For the better, not for the worst. Noor, okay, I think you had is, a question? This is a funny question. Some people used to relate the dead person with the gods. Uh, uh-huh. Is it, okay. yeah, uh, okay. could, could a dead person be a ghost? I want to ask you about it. I guess you've been watching Casper too much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, human beings aren't, don't become ghosts. There is no such thing as ghosts. These are fiction myths that people have lived in their illusions. They could be jinn. Yeah. They have bothered people, but not the humans to go back in the form of an unseen creature that goes through walls and says, Boo! <laughs> and scares you. No, there isn't. There is no such thing as reincarnation. Yeah. As some people might think and believe. Once you die, you die, you do not return. أَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهَا لَا يَرْجِعُونَ They will not return to it again. <clears throat> This dunya... When the last human being dies, it ends. It will be another heaven and another earth. يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ So this earth as we know it will vanish. And the heavens as we know it will vanish. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace earth and heaven with another earth and heaven. So another skies and another earth. Yes, Ibrahim. Yes, sir. what do you think about searching for the reason uh, for the reason that killed some, someone? Like in, uh, in my country, I can say so, when someone died, we, we used to, to search for the reason. What make... We used uh, to search for the reason? Yeah, uh, the uh, reason. yeah for, the, for the reason that killed the person. We don't say it was killed, but, uh, he was killed by, by God, but by something else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that takes <coughs> the souls. Allah ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem, Allahu yatawaffa al-anfusa hina mawtiha. Allah mm-hmm. is the one that takes the souls at the time of its death. But also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it based on a reasoning of why it died. Whether it is an old age or illness and disease like cancer and diabetes and so, yeah. and AIDS today with some people, may Allah protect us, or whether it was an accident, a car accident, or you fell, or someone just took your life away by shooting you or killing you or stabbing you, not poking, stabbing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This can happen, and these are reasons, but they're not actually the one that killed, that took the soul. But they caused, they, Allah allowed these reasons, al-asbab, to exist for the soul to go out. So the one that took the soul out is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu yatawaffa al-anfusa hina mawtiya. Allah takes the life of the person when it dies. Even though we might say, that that person killed this person. But he was a tool yeah. mm-hmm. that was used to end the life of the person. Like you say, the wall fell. The wall does not fall on its own. Yeah. It had to fall for a reason. Yeah. Whether someone pushed it. It's a reaction to something. Yeah. Or, or, or time. Or time have caused it to, to fall apart. Yeah. To decay. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Can we say that uh, the hell is a place for repunishment because uh, uh, they already been punished in the grave? Oh, definitely hell is the ultimate punishment. Mm-hmm. The grave is just a little... It's warming up. It's a warming up. It's a little taste. <laughs> it's a taste of what's to come. Well, <laughs> Warming but, up. But, but hell is the, is the outcome. And we will have an episode about hellfire. Mm-hmm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from Ameen. hellfire and allow us to go Ameen. to Jannah. Ameen. 
In the grave, brothers and sisters, it's a long, long, long life. It might be hundreds of years. But you know something? When you are resurrected, there will be a question. How many years did you exist on earth? Mm-hmm. And the answer, because of what you see, O Malqiyama, the answer would be, We lived a day or so. Yeah. A day or so. Very sure. Mm-hmm. So ask those who are counting. All of your 60, 70, 80, or 100 years, or whatever, of years that you have lived. Look back and see what you remember. The grave also. As long as it is, when it comes down to the day of judgment, it's a very short time. Because the day of judgment itself is equivalent to a thousand years of what we count. One day. Insha'Allah, brothers and sisters out there, in the next episode we'll talk about resurrection. And the return. And the day of judgment. And what happens summarized in the day of judgment. I hope I see you in the upcoming episode. I thank you for being here today with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the blessings and may we have learned a lot. I appreciate the brothers that are with me here in this important show of eternal message. I am your host, Abdul Hakim Ali. I wish to see you again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.